going? What is going on with everybody? It is your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young God, coming to you live in the green dungeon. Uh, I think my my guest also has a little green with him as well. Uh, and I'll let him introduce himself, man. Who we got here today? What's up, man? Name is Nicholas Craven. Happy to be here. What's going on, man? We haven't, uh, last time we did this, hey, really good interview. A lot of people still comment on that interview. A lot of people still talk about that interview. I guess people really like that interview. I, I, I didn't, I, I thought it was a good interview, but I didn't realize it would resonate with people that much. Like, cause you gotta think about it. You're touching a different crowd with even non, uh, non native English speakers, you know? So it's people that speak, uh, French because, uh, out there in Montreal, people uh, speak a lot of French, right? All right. So there's people in the comments, uh, I'm assuming speaking French because I don't speak it. So it's like different uh, languages. And stuff. So <laughs> you have brought a different crowd into that comment section. So shout out to you, man. That's like one of my well, most well-liked interviews that I hear. Man, I was surprised too, man. But like, you know, not because like the chemistry wasn't good. It was a great interview. But like, yeah, no, the reception's great. It's probably one of my best interviews. I was just watching it today before this. So no, super solid, man. And it's a it's an honor to have contributed something to the channel. Well, man, I mean, shout out to you because after that, you would just pop up in this live streams we'll be doing two, three o'clock in the morning or whatever, laughing in there with us. So I was like, yeah, you're just a, you're just a cool guy. So I, I want to thank you for just even contributing to just being in the live stream, late listeners talk about the most stupidest stuff. I appreciate Yo, it. bro, you guys were killing me, man. Like, I, you know, it was entertainment. <laughs> I was walking around the city just like listening to it on the, like walking on the sidewalk on my headphones. Like that shit was crazy. You know, it's crazy. So we went live last night. And I guess I started off like this. We were live last night, and uh, one of the guys in there, Sachi, me and Sachi never agree on rap opinions. And he just had these, he was just saying crazy stuff last night. Like, he has this whole thing where, uh, I don't know, he he's not, he's not in the phase right now where he's listening to people, let's say, not even lyrical rap, but He's he said that he's in the point of his life where he doesn't care about what they're saying, but he cares about how they are saying it. So I guess how they're forming what they're putting together. So as a producer, I think you may have an instant take on that because you are literally forming how a song sounds. So when you're listening to music, do you ever get to the point where you're caring more about how they are saying words or how they are putting together the rap? Or are you more like, I want to hear what they're I want to hear what they're saying first? Well, I, I want to hear what they're saying first, but like, if you can't deliver it, nobody's going to want to listen to it. You know, that's the thing. The most important thing to me is what you're saying, but the most important thing to get people to listen to you is to deliver it right. Mm. So at the end of the day, you know, that's the main point when you're trying to make a song to me is trying to get something that, you know, I'm not a rapper, but when I look for good verses or rappers to work with, I'm looking for people that have a good energy first and foremost, but also have to have some bars to go with it. But yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I agree with him, but I'm not to the point where like, you know, I was completely, uh, well, no, actually, no, I, I kind of completely agree with him. Like I can't really listen to a rapper, if, even if he have, has the best lyrics in the world, if the energy is off, you can't listen, but vice versa, if he's got the worst lyrics in the world and the energy is fire, then you probably could listen, you know? So that's a it's an interesting take though. No, yeah, it's that I, I I definitely agree with that sect. But somebody like Sachi, he'll take it there and you're like, oh, that's cool. Then he'll take it to the complete extreme. Like he was just off the wall last night. But I agree with that because I'm a big battle rap fan. And like one of the biggest things that's been, I feel like, uh played with battle rap since it's in like since his uh since his genesis is that battle rappers cannot make good music. Battle rappers are some of the best rappers in the world, if you ask me, from the Loaded Luxes to whoever. Like, they are really, really talented at rapping. But a lot of them struggle to make the music sound good. So it's like, yo, these people right there behind off. They're super duper good. But like you said, if you don't know how to package it to the point where it sounds good in a song, then you're losing people. So, no, I agree with you. That's so important. No, straight like the lyrics is a tool but at the end of the day you're trying to make a great song and you could be the best rapper in the world and not know how to make a good song you know have you ever been offered to work where somebody might reach out to you where there has been like a person that they're like okay this guy knows how to rap but it just didn't i guess sound good like he didn't know how to put it together yet 
Uh, yeah, many times. I'm talking like you know, just working with like local people or working with uh, you know, very tons of artists. Probably the like you know, probably half the artists I've worked with, you know, are people that were in the developing stages. You know, you, the, the goal is to work, you know, with the best of the best. But you know, sometimes you got to show love. You got to help some people. Some people that have like uh, a bright future ahead of them, if you see it. And you yeah, know, it's happened many times. But you know, it's uh, it's always better just to get somebody who can rap well, for sure. Do you have any uh, advice for people that are probably in that lane right now? You know, rap. They could like know how to put the words down, but they don't know how to actually put it together. My advice usually for anybody in any situation in music that they want to better themselves at their art, to me, it's just you got to listen to more. Like if you want to rap better, you got to listen to all the top rappers and you got to find who are like, you know, it's not because I believe a lot in like, you know, they say, uh, you know, taste it for everybody. Like everybody can have their taste. You can't really discuss taste and shit like that. I kind of feel like hip hop at least is one of the, arts where it's closer to sports in the way it's like you can, there's a way to measure not all the time but there's a way to kind of measure who's better than another you know mm. like there's a lot of different factors that come into play that's why you got all these top 10 lists and all these people like you know trying to like you know you saw the like cool mode trying to give people like a uh, like a report card grade and everything but it's like i feel probably in every art but it's maybe easier to just measure it in hip-hop that like there's some people that are just better than others so if you can really like just like find like you know a cool g rap somebody like that somebody that just like is part of the dna if you just sit down and you listen to all these people and like from like the 80s all the way up to like you know the drakes and the futures and the kodaks and everything like that like you'll, you'll just see common traits in everybody's flow and everybody's way of rapping that make equality in a way and it's like that to me is the best way to learn any art. You just listen to the art. You just study it as much as possible. Get the most information you can out of it. Most knowledge yeah. po as possible. For sure. And to keep the sports knowledge going, uh, talking about like, I guess, measuring people the way you would do like athletes or whatnot. The same way athletes get better. Like the best athletes can probably tell you about like old basketball players, old football players, old whatever that their sport is, whatever, because they study film. If you talk to any athlete, they study film and not just film that's going on currently. They go back and study older players that are great because one, one thing I heard somebody say, they say that they they um like, you know, it happens all the time. Anybody that's great is going to get hated on if it's a musician, athlete, whatever. But he was like, I don't do that because I'm more infatuated on why the greats are great. Instead of like trying to tear them down, like what made this person this way? Like you look exactly. at like a Michael Jordan. It's like how is Michael Jordan like what made him this? Like he's freaking shoe mogul, basketball. Like how did he become this? I feel like that's what other greats study. Like how do I become at this level? So I agree with you for sure. Exactly. Like one of the things I remember, like coming up, like when I was like studying hip hop, really trying to get deep in my Wikipedia's. Like when I found the wikipedia page with dj premier's discography and you just see how many different artists every year like there would be as many songs as artists he worked with in a year like he would just shoot beats to everybody and just work with mad people and through that he had like 200 placements or something like on various different like crazy projects and always had a standout track on the project you know whether it's like the non-fiction tracks or the screwball tracks or like the Christina Aguilera tracks or whatever, you know, it's like, that's something that when I learned that I was like, oh, wow, pro this is what makes, this is probably one of the things that makes them great, you know, and then I went and listened to all the stuff and I was like, oh man, yeah, exactly. Like, look at the versatility, look at the consistency, look at the quality and the quantity. It's yeah, for sure. It's all about studying the greats. Hey, you're going to think I'm shooting smoke of you, but, but you're doing that at this point in the sense of you're, you're you're getting all these placements but man when i hear an album and it's i don't even know who produced it like i because usually when i listen to the album i don't look at the production credits first i just let it roll through like let's say the albums gonna, you know how albums drop tomorrow at 12 o'clock in the morning let it ride through then i'm like okay who produced this beat i swear if you have a beat on it that song is probably going to be one of my favorites i'm like who produced this and then i check and i'm like of course it freaking 
the 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 the, the great white hope from uh, Montreal, <laughs> Nicholas Craven, and you don't miss. I think the first time I felt that, where I was like, "Who produced this?" was on my car lemonade. My favorite song was the one you produced, and I was like, "I was like, what what is this?" And I look it up. Of course, you produced it, and I don't know if you're getting that. I don't know if you is that a is that a conscious effort? Like, are you trying to go in on a, like an almost competitive level? Like I'm going to have like one of the best beats in here. Or are you just making a beat, sending it out? Or are you like going in trying to, you know, have that memorable beat on the album? Well, it's both because like, I don't know like which beats go into where, when I send it basically like, so it's just consciously when I'm making beats, it's just always just let me try to find to me. Like I just found through the years that the best beats I make, are the ones that make me like react. So I'm just looking for beats that make me react like emotionally or like physically or something. And I'm just focusing on that sound because that to me is the sound that's going to make me stand out and make, because it's the sound that's the closest to representing me in a way. You know, and but man, like no, but you, sorry to cut you, but like, yo, what? you've been showing mad love. I can't forget this. Like I sampled you hey, on a fucking record recently. The really? instrumental record I have coming out. Um, a tabarnak with uh, near mint. It's coming out only on vinyl, vinyl exclusive. You're on the intro, saying I think it's from the the mock review, and you're like, oh, like Craven doesn't make good beats. He makes great beats. I was like, oh, that's so hard. <laughs> I just had to use it. So yeah, if you if you hey. want to cut, if you want to cut on the royalties, just like we'll talk after the chat. Like you got you got what's coming. To you. I'm honored, man. And you like say we say you honored to to, to freaking uh, contribute to the uh, the channel. I'm honored to contribute to the discography of you because I feel like you were definitely right in the you were in the footsteps of you know being one of the greats. You know what I'm saying? Like like I, I I think that in the future people are gonna be mentioning you with you know like the the heavy hitters or whatnot. Like I feel like if you can keep up this consistency and nothing is telling me you're not going to keep up the consistency. 10 years from now, people are going to be looking at you like, oh, this guy's the OG. He's one of the, you know, like people are going to be looking at you as if they look at the, you know, the 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 top producers now. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to that, man. You're freaking, you're crazy. Thank <laughs> you're you, bro. And thank you. And thank you for that encouragement, bro. It's really nice. Like, honestly, I, ju I just got to keep at it, man. Honestly, that's all I think. And I was hyped because I feel like most, not, I don't know most people, but I could say my exposure to you was the ransom tapes. And I just would assume that a lot of people got exposed to you during that time. And you did the smartest thing you could do, bro, because everybody had their eyes on those tapes because they kept, it was multiple tapes released. And they're like, all these tapes are good. And like, who is this producer? And they're finding, like, okay, this guy Nicholas Craven is crazy. What you did was, I feel like, what everybody should do when they had spotlight on them. You took advantage of that. You start getting placements. You start working. Like, you start getting big names big names you start putting yourself out there a lot of people i feel like kind of wait you know what i'm saying like i, I know a lot of people get a hit song or something kind of fall back eight months later probably not a single then nobody kind of cares you struck why the the iron was hot i don't know if that was intentional but you were everywhere after those tapes came out was that an intentional thing well it was like op um what is it opportunity met pre preparation type of thing mm -hmm. like i was just like keeping shit going like two we're talking like the branson tapes are 2020 right me and ran like started working on those late 2018 and like 2017 me and fahim had like 30 songs mm. you know in the whole year so it's like i was always just trying to bombard people with shit and just trying to like move up where i could you know and me and fahim like that that's one of the things that opened the doors the most for me probably and then from that came a bunch of stuff that led me to to ran and then ran opened my whole scene up like because all the, that whole thing of dropping five tapes that was all ransom's idea like i had no like i i, I just like you know decided that he's got superior hip-hop iq than mine so whatever like you know if i try to go against whatever he thinks is the right way i might be hurting the quality you mm. know because i just don't have the experience so I really like sat back and let Ran just like drive the car. And it, he gave me the best like fucking diving board I could have ever asked for, you know? 
Like, he, he he took that car and drove it to a penthouse. He 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 dropped yeah. you off the penthouse and you did your thing, man. <laughs> You're taking over the penthouse, bro. No, it's a it's a like that that was you know I was honored for that that like you know still to this day that's probably like you know I love all the music I've done like my favorite song I've done probably still to this day is uh, La Pria with Mock, mm -hmm. but yo like what Rand did for, for, what like me and Rand did to me is like my contribution to the culture in a way it's like. I could, I always wanted to just add something, just add a little notch to the book or something. And it's like that to me, like those five tapes in a year and the quality and how he was rapping and the fact that he like came out of retirement and everything like that to me is like, I could literally like not retire because you know, like, you know, I, I gotta live, but like, I, I still got some shit to do still like as far as just like living comfortably, but as far as like contributing to the culture in a major way that I really, really, really love, you know, I can't thank Ransom enough for that opportunity, man. Really. See, I could tell you like, you're like me in the sense of like, you're not a, like, you're not, you're not too much out of it that you're not a fan anymore. Like I could tell, like you, you look back, like I could, I already know, like it's probably like random times of the day where it just hits you just on a Tuesday afternoon where you're like, wow, like, I can't believe I either probably work with this person or I made this type of impact with this. And I appreciate that. Like, like you said, after that, you felt like you could retire, you know, like I, I said the same thing. Like I, I tell myself all the time, if I can ever get an alchemist interview, I feel like I could retire. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course you can't, cause you got to keep going, but that's like one of those, almost like a milestone type of thing. Like this is, you know, like this is what you dreamt, you dreamt of type of thing. And I think that's exactly. cool that, you, that, 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 that you're not, too out of it that you're not a fan anymore. I, I always like when uh, artists can still be fans of the craft that they're making. I feel like I gotta hold on to that though. You know, you'd like you feel it. You feel it dissipate in a way. Like mm. you feel it. Like there's like I realize that I'm listening to less and less music in general, mm. and it's like it's like I gotta I gotta really like I feel like if I lose that, I'm gonna lose uh, a certain understanding and a certain perspective that's necessary. Because I always worked in a way that I felt I wanted artists to work, you know, the artists that I, I was a fan of, the like I always tried to emulate the moves they made that I that made me happy as a fan, you know, and not do the shit that people that I was a fan of did that pissed me off. Mm. So if I lose that perspective of the fan, I feel like it's probably gonna really really hurt me. Honestly, I, I feel like you hear that from anybody in art that's like had like a second win or a second career where it's like like i lost they like they lost their love for it you know like there's a lot of people i can't think about it top of my head but just like there's people that you know probably just went to like little little droughts in a career and then they regained the love somehow from for for their art and they went on just a crazy career renaissance you know yeah. so i feel like i feel like it's always a great thing to to have that fan uh you know that fan in your heart because you, it's just something genuine about it. Like, I feel like music, the best music is genuine. Like, the music that we still listen to from the 70s and the 60s, like, 70s soul music is, I, I don't know, that's, like, my favorite era of music ever. And that music, you could tell, is coming from the most genuine place. And that's why it still resonates. Like, there's songs about love. There's songs about heartbreak. There's songs about the world at that time. There's songs about war. There's songs about just anything around that time period it came from a genuine place. Marvin Gaye, like all those, what's going on, that came from a very genuine place. And that's why what's going on is still regarded as one of the best albums and still can be played as if it just came out last week, you know, because yeah, for sure. it comes from that genuine place. So yeah, man, never lose that <clears throat> just genuine love for what you're doing because I feel like it resonates and people can tell when it's genuine and when it's not. No, I completely agree, man. Completely agree. Do you have any other like, hobbies or any things that you're interested in just like i guess art related like are you into i don't know like film or anything like that i'm a big film fan i never really got a chance to like create in film other than like help direct uh, music videos and shit like that like there's a video i do with my homie jimmy d which is one of the first artists i started working with in montreal we got like five albums together but we did this video once when uh wow it's fitting for the times right now 
but it's when there was like an attempt at a coup d'etat in Turkey and they tried to like take over the government and they failed and there was like fighting and shit. So like, and the, we just like, we're so stupid, but we thought it was funny that the president did a, uh, like uh, na- address the nation through FaceTime. Like he was on <laughs> FaceTime, like somebody was holding the phone up to a microphone and he was like in his house, like on FaceTime, uh, addressing the nation about the coup and saying that everything was going to be fine through FaceTime. And we did a whole video like around that and like, yo, we're like in the bunker, like we're all in fatigues with like, like strapped up and shit. It, like I'm splitting a blunt with a machete, like. So like, you know, I, I, I always love film, but I never really got a chance other than, you know, little videos like that. Coup d'etat, that's the name of the video. Check that shit out. But um, I love I love uh, visual art. Like mm. uh, the, you, you ever see my, you've heard my song Bandit with Conway? Yeah. Like the logo for that, I designed that like on Photoshop off of the mm. uh, Buffalo Bandit uh, lacrosse team logo. Oh, okay. Yeah, Conway used to rock the lacrosse team logo, and it was like a cowboy with a lacrosse stick. Yeah. So I changed the cowboy hat to a snapback and the lacrosse stick to a shotgun. Mm. And I changed Bandit in the back to Conway. It makes so, so much sense because your visuals, if even from like your cover arts, I feel like are very uh, eye appeasing. Like even the 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 current tape, you know, like just the the leather jacket with the red like that's it just looks nice to look at first of all thank you bro. I, hey you did you, you did your, you were trying to swag out on us yeah the jacket is nice that's a nice ass jacket you, i like right the there. jacket hey, it's a nice ass jacket but yeah i thank it you. makes you like visual arts because all of your covers are like oh that's like if that was on vinyl but like, oh that's a nice thing to look at i always think about that like if you want to make an album cover will it look good to like hang up on a vinyl and i feel like your album covers match that so Oh yeah, no, that's the point for sure. And also, like when you buy records from Good Felons when they put out vinyls with me, uh, I draw uh, like test presses covers for them. Like I do like aliens or like you know like little like burners and shit like that, little hand styles on them. And like they sell like ten of them. Like every drop we do, it's like it's got an original Craven drawing on the test press cover. But yeah, but if yeah, so that's another one though. The jacket that's probably my first foray into like fashion designing. Cause that was like, you know, like all me still, like I got the patches wow. done in China and I, p- I had to pay like for 10, shout out to uh, Stitch Kings for hel- helping me get the, get the, the link on that, man. They got me this, they linked me with this company that I got 10 patches of the front small one and 10 patches of the big one on the back, brought it to a company called Jage Design in Montreal. And they do like, uh, they do like the NBA, like Jeff Hamilton type jackets and shit like that, for, like NASCAR and a bunch of like teams and stuff in the States. Like they still, they got big contracts and they agreed to do this like one off jacket for me. And man, that leather is like the finest cowhide ever. And I don't really eat beef or anything, but man, I love leather, man. <laughs> like for real. You could tell the leather's good when you can see it through like your iPhone screen. I was like, yeah, this is this is some good leather through my iPhone screen. So I can only tell yeah. what it looks like in person. So yeah, yeah, man. Fucking and I got I got my homie uh, Guillaume Landry to do the photography on film. And uh yeah, it came out nice. We used like the big front flash, you know, make it really like shiny and shit. So no, I'm 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 very happy for, of the, like how the cover came out still. So fire cover I, I brought up film specifically because i'm uh, minoring in film right now that's i'm taking my first film class and uh it's, i'm taking this film appreciation class right now where we have to watch like a movie a week that he like assigns to us and uh just good movies that we've been watching uh what's the last movie you watch yo i watched that dr sleep joint the 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 shining sequel i seen that i didn't see it i mean i haven't seen it but i seen that it's like a thing yeah, I, I can't even front, bro. Like, it was like, it's not The Shining. It's like Harry Potter, but it's kind of dope. It's kind of okay. fire. Like, it's like Harry Potter with Shining lore. It's kind of like, you know, I can't even front. The the show was entertaining. I liked it. It was kind of dumb, but it was kind of dope to, like, see what happened, like, after The Shining and shit and see, like, the callbacks. But, yeah, no, I'm a big, I'm a big film head. Like, I had a, I had a, like, 
a moment where I bought my first flat screen in like 2017. I had been, I had my apartment since like 2010 and I never had like a good TV and I bought like a flat screen in 2017. Smart TV, bought a hard drive and just started trying to Google the best movies of every country and just trying to watch every, every like great movie ever. And man, you know, uh, Kur- Kurosawa? Uh, what's that? Akira Kurosawa, he's like a Japanese director. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fire, yeah, yeah. fire. He's the one, bro. He's the one. I've never actually. seen any films, but I'm I'm familiar with who he is. Yeah, he's the one. Yeah, watch, watch Ran, Ran, Ran. Yeah, R A N. Let me That's write the that. Joint. Down. Let me write that down. Eighty five. That's like his one of his only films in color, because he's got like forty films, but they're all like from the forties and fifties. But that's from the eighties. Okay. It's crazy. I, I will. I will write it down. You know, it's a good movie that we had to watch in the class. Uh, have you seen Whiplash? No. Hey, Fire? write that. Write that down. Because you're a mu- It's a music movie. I. Okay. This movie's about a drummer who just got accepted into like I don't know, like one of the big like uh, music institutions, and uh, the professor or the teacher or the music instructor, whatever you want to call him, he's just a hard ass. And he is very intense. Some may say too intense to bring the best out of his students. And I mean, just the length that he goes to break his students down to make them perform good. And all I'm going to say is the last scene might be one of my favorite scenes I've seen in film in years. It is so crazy and intense. Watch I'm gonna check it out. Don't don't spoil me too much, man. Bro, like, you know, it. No spoilers. It's no spoilers, man. But yeah, it's a it's a good movie about a drummer. But uh, yeah, man, I've been just watching uh just a lot of stuff, man. Hey, if if you ever see a good movie, feel free to hit me up. Just because I definitely I'm trying to I'm trying to just get more into the film world myself. So yeah, if you if you got some good stuff, definitely let me know, man. Yeah, I got I got some joints. I'll hit you with some for sure. For sure, sure for sure. Um. But yeah, I guess going back to the album cover and that album, hey, that's a great, great album, man. Starting off with freaking Stove God. Uh, hey, I was, I was like hyped to review it. Then I got sick. I'm still trying to review it, but I was just like, man, I wanted to review it early this week. But freaking Stove God coming over that beat, man. Uh, I don't know, God, what a God, what a God. Like I love his singing, man. His singing is just so, it's so unique to him. And the way he just starts rapping, I mean, that beat and him was a match made in heaven. That's a beautiful intro, bro. Thank you, bro. That's crazy, though. You just sang, uh, I got it out the mud, swear to God. Bro, I was fucking fucking listening to Mock before this. (laughs) Hey, excuse me. Uh, I can't let that one go. I had to to point it out. Hey, somebody was going to do it. That's hilarious. Exactly. I was exactly. like, that's hype though. That's my joint too. Hey man, he that's a fucking beautiful song. Hey, that that okay, let's go there. Let's start with the box thing. I'm already singing <laughs> fucking mock album. <laughs> I'm already singing fucking That's mock crazy. Song. That mock song also. I mean, speaking about people who sing and it's something that's unique. When I listen to mock, I think I might have said this maybe in our last interview, maybe I didn't, but my first time I heard mock. I'm a huge uh, Most Def Yassin Bey fan. So when I heard that singing, I was just like, man, that sounds familiar. And I was like, yo, like, not that it's like identical or anything, but it's almost like, it's almost like a, a, a freaking instrument. It's like you have like the woodwinds, you have percussion, you have brass. They would be in the same, I feel like, family of instruments in the way that they deliver their vocals is so, sure, so different. Sure. You know, and uh, yeah, I feel like when he gets over your beats, he's just like, all right, yeah, I'm about to just go crazy. I'm about to just make the best song of all time because, man, the the songs, the, the songs you produce in that album, great stuff. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. That was like, that was even a surprise to me, you know, like, like me and Mock, like, you know, we just basically our communication is just like, yo, beats. All right, pack beats. All right, pack. All right, this, 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 this. All right, put aside. They're yours. It was the samples, boom, boom, boom. All right, boom. You know, like that's basically like we stay like efficient in our conversations. So we said, "Yo, something's coming." I was like, "All right," and then like, <laughs> Balen show drops, and I was like, "All right, that's a, that's a treat." 
<laughs> but yeah, no, that 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 was a uh, that's a big milestone too. You know, that to me is another one. I've got like half a mock album. You know, like of like beats. So you're all yeah, riddled, was, riddled all over that album. <laughs> you're riddled yeah, all. Yeah. Well, did you know that going in, or was that a surprise? When I knew. I knew he. Well, he just picked a lot of beats. Mm. So I knew, like, so, like you know, like when he picks beats, they're coming out usually. So, like, he oh, picked a lot. Like, so I was like, ah, oh, word. He's one of those people that if he picks those beats, it's probably he's making a song from it. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you like that as an artist? You prefer because I feel like there's a lot of artists who might pick your beats, and you're like, oh, is he going to use like you're kind of limbo type of thing? Does that happen more than often? I'm in, uh, dog. I'm in purgatory. Talking about limbo. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Yeah, limbo for sure. That's but you life now. About that with 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 Mock. That's cool. At least, at least that's cool. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of lot of other people too, for sure. Like, like mo the the people you see me work a lot with is because I'm not in limbo. Yeah. Mm. That's basically it. Yeah that 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 album uh surprise drop came and I mean yeah that was a that was a really good one. I feel like last year Mock was in a like he. I feel like he's in a I'm I'm in the best rapper alive mode right now. You know, like he's like proving like, hey, like I can out rap anybody. I like he's going insane and kind of going back to what you were talking about uh, with the Ransom albums. This is like your kind of etching history, because I feel like what Mike is doing is going to get. I mean, when you have freaking Drake posting your music, the biggest like artist in the world, yeah. your etch is being made in history. And I feel like. The songs you're producing for them, and I mean, hey, once again, man, just shout out to you. Thank man. you, bro. Thank you're, you, you're bro. For real, I you're appreciate making... it. Thank you to thanks to you and to everybody else that love this stuff, man. Because I don't know, man. When I heard like to me, dudes like that, even like you know, talk about like Fahim and Griselda and Brock, and when you hear the like the music they're making. Like in the past, like ten years, I just knew it was gonna go come to this point. It was just mm. obvious to me. It was just the cream rises to the top, always. Like there's always been garbage in every generation, every generation. Like and everybody is like, oh, our generation has the worst music. Look back then, they had Prince and they had uh, Led Zeppelin. But it's like, bro, they had so much other garbage that everybody forgot about. And that's just what happens. And the cream rises always. So I always trust that process. Hey, man. Everybody rose on this last tape, man. Uh, specifically Stove God, who, who who didn't get out the mud. <laughs> but I cannot believe I did that. <laughs> I remember now. It's definitely the, we won, nigga, we won. We won. Yeah, right yeah, there, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I Stove God. I had a, I emailed Stove God for an interview. And he said he was a big fan of my review of his album. So shout out to that. That's a uh, that's a cool guy. Shout out to Stove Guy. Man. How did that? Yeah, song he's a very cool guy. How did that come about? Yeah. Uh, hit up Jazz, and Jazz put me in contact with Stove, and we worked. We, that song went through quite a few iterations. Like we had a first version with, basically, the first thing we did was a completely different verse on a completely different beat, and then basically through like different changes and everything it ended up being a completely different beat with a new verse and a new hook so like i've got another beat with a with a stove 20 bars on it that i'm gonna mm. be using soon for something yeah but yeah no that that track uh that was the track that required the most attention on the project probably because of uh just the 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 different changes it went through all the other tracks was just like you know boom all right got the track boom that one like but honestly like that's probably one of the tracks I'm like I'm proud of the, like this album to me is my like this and director's cut scene three are my two like magnum opuses right now like if like the, everything stops tomorrow like that's my magnum opus so like I'm super proud of the whole project but that track as an opener to the rest just came out so perfect that like I, I yeah no it's it was worth every every bit of sweat honestly hey i love that beat i love that sample uh first time i ever heard that sample i don't know it was like 10 years ago or something and i was like yeah, this is beautiful i think i think fucking uh 
I think maybe J. Cole did that sample like uh, some years ago. Yeah, and I had never heard that. Everybody was like, yo, you flipped the, the track. And I was like, no, I flipped the sample. Like, I don't I don't sample rappers. <laughs> like, but no, I, I'm not a big uh, fan of his, honestly. Like, I've never, like, you know, I'm going to have to sit down one day and go through his music. Just like, yeah. I'm going to have to sit down and go through like the Beach Boys and stuff like that. But it's like, I never really connected with this stuff as much as like, you know, other people that are out in this era. So I never heard that. Never heard. That album too, I remember. That was the one with that single where he was in the like uh in the basketball court or something, like singing to a girl. I don't know what yeah. album that was on. It might have been on the album. I, I think it was like his 2010 album. I remember that's when, like when he came out yeah. around the town Drake around the time Drake had best I ever had and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I remember like his first impression on me was not good. So I never really recovered from that, honestly. But that, that, that. that verse on Benny's shit was pretty retard, uh, pretty crazy, pretty, pretty amazing. For sure. For sure. I, yeah. um, I would say uh, one thing about J. Cole that because I've had my ups and downs with J. Cole as well. But one thing I cannot take away from J. Cole is that definitely early in his career, he could produce a song. Uh, have you ever heard? Because like one of my favorite beats from him is you ever heard uh, "High Power" by Kendrick? On uh, Section Eighty. Yes. Uh, yeah, for sure. That's I didn't know cool. that was him. That's a cold beat. Mm. So yeah, he yeah. he can he can do some shit when when he's when he's on those boards. So that's when I kinda heard, hype. I didn't know that. Yeah. So when I heard you uh, sample that. At first, the first thing I was like, is this a J. Cole song? I was like, oh, no, this is the same sample. So, yeah, uh, I'll definitely, I'll send you some old J. Cole, like, just production shit that I feel like you would be impressed by. So, yeah. I would appreciate that, please, because I have heard, like, good chops from him and good and good digging from him. So, yeah, for sure, for sure, for yeah. sure. Um, but, yeah, uh, that, I feel like that was a beautiful way to start it off. And I mean, just the whole tape, man. I mean, one of my favorite beats is the song with Evidence. Evidence, I feel like, always is one of the most slept on uh just artists man uh evidence is so good to me and uh it was good to hear him on uh i, I don't that was that the first time he's been on one of your beats i've never heard him on one of these yeah before. yeah it is it is for sure so, that was good to hear him on one of your beats and uh that beat you put your foot in that one that's one of my favorite beats for sure now i love that beat thank you that is one of my favorite beats i've probably ever done uh, to be really? honest with you. that I yeah mean, is, i don't think I don't think anybody's ever used that sample, honestly. Mm -hmm. I might like I, I could be surprised because I don't look I don't I try not to look at the uh, you know that website to see who else sampled, but um I think that one's uh that one's a good uh, a good find, honestly. And I love what I did with it. But thank you, bro, for real. Real quick, real quick, speaking of that, how do producers feel about that website? <laughs> It's a little too much. Okay, I get you. I get you. I get you. I get yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go ham after seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's interesting. I tell them. I tell them, man. I tell them go and go and try to find. Like they, I'll just say one thing. I said some negative stuff the other day, and the next, and like I actually like went to look, and they had added like forty new entries under my name, and I was like, Oof. okay. So now, yo, the level of digging that I'm at right now, yo, this next stuff, nobody's ever gonna find any of this. None how of are, this. How are they finding it? How, is it like are they? You know, I, sometimes, sometimes I, I, I use shit. People just, you know, listen. Their mom used to listen to it in their living room, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's just oh, so it's, it's like the because I thought the people who I didn't know if people like. If it was like a user anybody can contribute, yeah, it's like okay. a, it's it's like genius. We were giving okay. them too much light though, right now. <laughs> gotcha, 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 gotcha. But yeah, I was, I was always curious about how you know producers felt about that, but uh, but uh, no, sure. yeah, I I, uh, I I love that though. I love when producers because like somebody like Mad Lib, like that's uh, I've seen so many YouTube videos like samples that have still never been discovered, and it's like eight Mad Lib songs, <laughs> and I was just For like, sure, I love that. I love that. like think of uh shook ones it took them like what it took like they just found the shook one sample like the down 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 like that that little line they just found out like two years ago and i'm mm -hmm. not even gonna say who it is but it is somebody that's super well known like mm -hmm. it's a extremely well-known artist 
wow. and nobody found the sample for like 30 years, 20 years or something. Yeah, shout out to Have. Shout out to shout out to him. I mean, it's like uh it's crazy that uh that I don't feel like people who sample that's like finding great samples, I feel like is an art in itself, you know, like actually digging. Bro, that's the that's the art. That's my <laughs> art. That's nothing else. It's all it's I do. <laughs> would you would you ever do like a rhythm roulette? For sure, for sure. I would smoke it. Come on, dog. But like, <laughs> honestly, the thing is, like, my skill comes in, like, my skill, like, the the quality of my stuff depends on me just digging and just researching and just like, like I was saying about like researching to become a better artist. Like, I like took that to just researching music, like in general. And right now, I'm trying to just sample records that aren't on the internet. You know, just trying to find stuff that nobody could find on the internet. So you can't even put your link on there and say this is it. You know. But yeah, no, that's the that's the art to me. That's the that's my favorite thing in creating is just the fact that like, you know, I love so many artists and like the artists I love had to go and meet together in a rented space with instruments and like rehearse together to get tight to do shows to make albums in one take or two takes you know and like i'm lucky enough that my creative process is literally just smoking weed and just listening to like insane amounts of music and just going to record stores and just digging and buying like 40 records and listening to all of them and you know that's the thing you know it's it's work it's not like it's not work but yeah. It's like I'm. It's self reliant, and mm -hmm. it's like it's. I don't need a lot of stuff. I just need to go buy records, have my laptop, my turntable, my sound card, and I'm good to go. And it's always a plus when you enjoy what you do. You know, bro, it's the best. It's honestly the best because I just love discovering and listening to music. So the fact that that's part of my that's literally my creative process is the best thing ever. You know what you do in this album that. I have to give you freaking all the claps in the world for. So I've, I don't know how much I've really iterated this on this channel. And I'm pretty sure people are going to be like, how could you? But I cannot say that I'm the hugest Bodie James fan. I can't say that. And it's slightly, be, it's, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. It's slightly just because of his, he's talented. He can rap. But I think that, he raps so slow sometimes like that, that it, I don't know, like I just, it's just too, it's just like his pacing is too slow for me sometimes. And it's just, I, it's just like, ah, I wish that he would just kind of rap out in a different pace. But on this song, I felt like the beat complemented his pacing perfectly. So maybe it's not Bodie with me. Maybe it's just, the beat sometimes doesn't compliment him like I would think that it should. And I, he works with Alchemist. Alchemist is my favorite producer of all time. So it's not even saying he's working with bad producers. I just think that the pacing sometimes, it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. But the way that he flowed over this with the, 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 the what do you say? Something uh, uh, like, like the grapes and no, the He's fruit. sliding, man. He's, the way this he one, he's that, sliding beautiful. through, bro. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You did yeah. your thing on that. You did your thing on that. Thank you, man. Thank you, you man. Your... But the, yeah. yeah, have you heard Super Tech Mobile? Uh, is that uh the new I album? Mean, I haven't heard the new album. I haven't heard his new album. Like I'm, a, I've been a fan since my first Chemistry set. Like I bought that at like. You guys have HMV in the states? You guys used to have that for, by CDs? Uh no. HMV? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. It's like it, it. It was owned by like RCA Records and shit like that. But anyways um I, I the last one of the last albums i bought at hmv was uh my first chemistry set because i just mm. always loved the alan boldy collaboration but like then when they went to press a t they stepped it up and i was like oh wow they're on some like they're really getting like artistic on this one and it's like yeah. you know amazing songs on there and then like bo jackson was even more artistic and even more like crazy to me and like then they drop Tech Mobo, and honestly, it makes everything else in his in their 
like catalog seem inferior to me. That mm. last one, Super Tecmo Bo, is the best album of this decade up to now to me. That really? album, bro. Oh my god, those tracks like talk about like a tight 10 track album. There's not a miss in the track list. Every song is different. Every song is amazing. Dog, that tape Al and Boldy made like that is probably that's probably top 10 tapes of the last like 10 years. I gotta listen. That tape have- is amazing, bro. It's like Moth in a Flame. <laughs> Have you heard Moth in a Flame? Or Guilt? That sounds familiar. Let me look at this. Let me look at this track and see if I heard any. Yo, Guilt? Man, no, no, no. Or 300 Fences, Great Adventure. Yo, the tape, Bumps and Bruises. No, the Bumps and Bruises beat. Man, see, when you were talking about fanning out earlier, like, I just, that that album just popped in my head. And I was like, man, I, I hope I could talk about that album in this interview. Because that album, man, hats off. For real, like, bro, that's like pure genius. That tape, everything about it. Boldy sure. is scary on that album. He's like, he is scary, bro. He is like one of the most scary rappers of all time on that album. It's amazing. Well, it's crazy. You hold, you hold that note. Somebody just rung my uh, doorbell. Let me see who's at this door real quick. I'll be right back. Oh man. All right, and uh, they left. <laughs> so, uh, but no, okay. So, like, you know, what's crazy about Bodhi? I don't think he sounds like him, but I feel like their pacing could be similar. And I love this person, a currency, and he works just as much with Alchemist. So, mm. I've always wanted to like Bodhi, maybe because, for example, MF Doom. It took me, I kid you not, maybe about like three years for mf doom to click with me when i first heard mf doom i just thought it was i i was like this is i don't like this this i don't understand this i don't like this i swear to god i wanted to like it so bad and everybody was like this is so great mad villainy clicked for me like three years later and i was like this is i get it like i get mf doom i get why this guy is amazing so yeah maybe maybe uh Maybe Bodhi is my MF Doom. He my new F Doom because everybody that I respect loves him. And I'm just like, all right, maybe I got so I'm gonna give what is it, Super Tech Mobile? I'm gonna give yeah, Super if that, Tech I, I think that one's the one. I, I hope that one's the one for you. And it's short, so it's a it's a concise listen. I see nine songs, so we'll see, man. I'll I'll, I'll definitely I'll, kill I'll definitely I'll definitely let you know. But I mean what he did on your album. It's it's a good step for what I want to hear. I love that. Like I, the way he was flowing, the way that you put him in a pocket. I feel like you put people in just great little pockets. Like the way that Pink Sifu was flowing on that song. It's like the command that he had over the beat. That's something that I feel like I've grown appreciation for as I've gotten older is the command that a rapper can have on a beat. It's like he can go in and out of pockets. He can switch flows. He could do different inflection of his voice and just kill it the entire way. And the way Pink Sifu, it sounded like he had the beat in a noogie. It seemed like he was just giving the beat a noogie as he was rapping that whole song. Yeah, and I don't I, I don't know what it is about your beats, but I feel like rappers, they get comfortable and they're just they're just doing their thing, man. You, 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 well, it's like, it's, it's, thank you, bro. But I, I still attribute it to what I told you last time, man. It's just sending them a bunch of beats, just like mm. a lot of beats for them to choose from. It's also like, you know, I try to, you know, I'm a fan of these people. I listen to these people so I can see the difference and the nuances in their sound compared to other artists. So when I send a pack, I'm also tailoring it to the artist, knowing what they do as music. You know, I won't send Pink Sifu a bunch of boom bap beats at like 90 BPM that sound like Pete Rock or something, but I might send that to Fahim and Mock. You know what I mean? I probably won't send that to to Ransom and Rock Marciano neither. You know, I'll send them like, but you know, so there's like different style of beats I have that I know are for different people. So I'll I'll make a big pack of beats for one person and let them choose which one they connect with the most in the pack. 
No, I could definitely tell that because, hey, my favorite rapper on, in the world still to this day, Navy Blue. When you produce for Navy Blue, it's almost like you have a Navy Blue folder because I feel like the beats you you send to him or that, that he uses don't sound like any of your other beats. It's like almost tailored for him. And it's uh, it's beautiful. All I was just I went back to go listen you, to the songs, to, the songs you did on uh, Songs of Sage. And I was like, yo, these are just beautiful beats that you give him. And, uh, and that's it. Like, like Sage, I won't give Sage like unless he asks me for that. I won't give Sage like a grimy, grimy beat. Right. I'm mm -hmm. always going to give Sage something that I think sounds beautiful. Like you said, something that sounds really soulful, really rich, really like that has a story in it somehow or something, you know, like a dude like Mock, I'll try to send him a cold beat, like a beat that's just cold and hard and like. It might be like just a drumless soul loop, but there's something like hard about it. Like, uh, well, La Pria kind of works for Navy in a way too, but it's but that's I find it a bit more menacing than what I would send to like a Navy beat. But like Mozambique drill, that could be a beat the Navy could have used in a way. You know what I mean? But that was a beat I made for Mock consciously. I made that for Mock, and I didn't send it to anybody else. But yeah, no, Navy definitely. I have a style a specific style that i know that i can send to navy that he's gonna like he's one of the guys i work with that i've like like understood which type of beats he prefers for, of me like the most in a way some other people still surprise me like mock surprised me with the la Jansal beat mm. honestly like i'll be honest with you i wasn't the biggest fan of that beat i just like i send Mo mock like everything i just send him everything and I let him go through everything that's available. And um, that beat, like, I made it. I liked it, whatever. It wasn't my favorite beat in the pack. But what Bach did with it, I was like, oh, I could have never, like, foreseen that kind of song with that beat, you know? So that's another thing. When I'm talking about, like, letting people drive also, like, that's another way I do that by just sending them a bunch of beats for them to choose where we're going. I think about that all the time, like, a beat could be not even bad, but it's just not the most amazing thing I've ever heard. And it's like the fact that the artist heard that and took it to a just like completely different level, I feel like is amazing, you know? So like the fact that it's not like he did that with you, like you're saying like you didn't dislike the beat, but it just wasn't one of your favorites. And the fact that he took, you know, Lodge and Sol and just went completely, you know, otherworldly with it. I think that's like just crazy how artists do that. That's that's fire. Shout out to Mark. Shout out to Mark. Shout out to everyone, man. <laughs> Has that yeah. ever happened? Has that ever happened? Was that the first time that ever happened to you where an artist just took a song, took a beat of yours and did something that like you would have never thought an artist would have done with it? The one who did that the most is Ran, honestly. Mm -hmm. Ransom, Ransom's beat selection to me is like, it's like he, like in the drumless beats I make, it's like if he likes the opposite of the ones I like. <laughs> but when he uses them, I'm like, oh, it is one of my best beats. <laughs> like, you're right. Like, this is, like, the one. Like, the one he did, the first one he did was Shea Noir. Uh, I think it was called There Will Be Blood. Off the last track on the director's cut scene, too. Uh, yo, like, I did not like that beat. That was an old beat. Like, that was one of my first, like, attempts at, like, drumless stuff when I, like, really got into, like, Reloaded in, like, 2014, 2015. And man, the, what he did with that track is just like to this day, like that beat sounds good now because of what Rand did to it. Mm. Yeah, that's a it's a recurring recurring phenomenon for sure. Did were you guys ever in studio for that, or was that just all emails? Never met Rand in person. Wow. Even to this day, yeah, we were supposed to meet up in like November, but then the border shut down again, and then. Uh, I, I was still finishing the album, but now that the album's done, I have to go see him, really. And now that everything's opening up, I have to. Because the border just opened up, like, uh, in November. Because, basically, Jersey, like, New York City is a six-hour drive from where I'm at right now. Mm. You know, Montreal's only six hours away. It's, like, it's closer. Like, I'm closer to New York than Toronto. Mm. And uh, Jersey's even closer. So... I could just go down to Jersey and fuck with Rand like any time if it wasn't for the border being closed. But now that it's open, we got to make it happen for sure. But That's yeah, all great. of that was done emails, texts. 
calls. That's that's the crazy. first two, it's only texts and emails. The first two. Then we start mm. well, no, actually it's only emails. And then we started like calling each other and stuff and like having conversations. But there's like a video of me and Rand on YouTube, like speaking on like uh IG Live. That's the first time I spoke to Rand, like it, like in like with my voice. <laughs> Literally. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was just natural. And like, you know, then we really like got to it after the second one. And then we made director's cut scene three, which is my favorite for sure. Yeah, both of you are insane humans because I don't understand how you could do that. I feel like when I when I think of like collab albums, I would if I was made a collab album, I would have to be with that person 24 seven. I would have to live with that person and just like create that art. So the fact that because I feel like it wouldn't come out as good. The fact that it came out so great and you guys six hours apart and like you said even for the first two not even speaking to each other that's crazy that's crazy man yeah man it's a it's amazing for sure but he made it happen he just had like honestly like i just had complete trust in him mm. and i just gave him every like every bit of control on everything and i just honestly like the only thing i remember him telling me that i was like uh and i wasn't sure but i didn't say anything was when he said that we're going to drop the first, we're going to drop an album of four songs. That's what he told me. Like, you know, we didn't have any plans of like following it up and doing five albums. We had been working back and forth with emails for like a year and a half. We had, we had like eight songs in the stash. And he was like, we're just releasing a four song EP. And I was like, uh, sure. <laughs> and then he put it out. And then next month, a six track EP. And then a 10 track album. And then a six track EP. And then a seven track EP, you know, it's like, basically like if I would have contested that or like told him to make a whole album or something, even if let's say he would have listened to me, that would have been one album, just one album, you know, like it probably, well, probably would have made a couple more, but it wouldn't have been five projects. And that's yeah. like one of the like impressive things. It's like, at the end of the day, it's five projects. It's not like the four track EP is less of a project because it's just four tracks. Like the thing is crazy. No features, just me and him, you know? So, yeah, no, Ran uh, delivered, and uh, I'm very happy that I put my faith in him, for sure, as, as well as a lot of other rappers I work with. Hey, man, you delivered then, and you're still delivering now, man. I don't, uh, don't want to keep you here for too long, but you are definitely, uh, like I said, I feel like one of the people that everybody should start tapping into because you definitely got something special going on. So, hey, if you have anything else you have to say to the people, please let it be known, man. Uh, well, I guess, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you everybody for listening. Um, I got a lot of stuff coming this year, a lot of projects, got some stuff with Drew coming, got some stuff with Fahim, some stuff with Ransom, got some stuff with, uh, Akhenaton from the French legendary hip hop group. I am probably like, I, I was thinking about it today, the group I am which is a French hip hop group. Like they're legendary. They've been like out since like the eighties. Uh, they still do world tours to this day. They're probably the only like act in hip hop outside of Ghostface Killer that has a track with Sons of Man and a track with Beyonce. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. So people like, yeah, people in the States have no idea about I Am, but like, you know why? Like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna like, you know, I can't I told, told me this and he didn't like say like this was what it was. He just like pointed it out. But he's known Nas since the 80s because because I, I can't I used to live in New York in mm. the 80s and used to work with Andre Harrell. Rest in peace. And um, he met Nas like main source era, like early. And he's like known Nas like throughout his life. And he's got a group called I Am, right? A French legendary hip hop group, like I said, I Am. And everybody in the group except one guy has names of pharaohs or like Egyptian like mythology mm, right here you're going and Nas his third album is called I am and he's a pharaoh on it. so you know there's coincidences always you know like there's the whole like Asiatic king stuff like I am is literally imperial Asiatic men but like and, and it's all tapped into the same type of like you know like like culture like it could be pure coincidence, but it's a fact that they know each other and all of these things, you know, 
coincide effectively. So people should listen to I am. Okay. L'école du micro d'argent. That's the joint. You know the <clears throat> not to I don't wanna can I like talk about a rival uh, music reviewer from YouTube? Not rival, but a fellow no. music reviewer. Go go for no. it, man. Yeah, for sure. No, no, go <laughs> for it. Yeah, no, no, no. You ever seen the guy Professor Sky that reviews the mock joints? I've never watched him, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he like he uh he's like a French teacher mm -hmm. in New York. And he like talked about I am in a review how mm. they're the reason that he spoke French, or that he like learned French and became a French teacher because he was like in Quebec and he was looking for like in like 96, he was just looking for something that looked like a Wu Tang album just because he was waiting for Wu Tang forever. And he saw L'école du Micro d'Argent by um, I am and bought it. And I'm telling you, that album, every American person should listen to that. Every American hip hop fan should hear the beats on that album. Mm. Like, it's a it's a gem. What's it's it a called? super gem. L'école du micro d'argent. That's the school of the silver microphone. The school of the silver microphone. Yeah. And it's like the production on there is just amazing. And basically, one of the well, one of the main guys, well, not one of the main guys, but one of the like big rappers in the group, I can attend. Me and him are like finalizing like two projects right now. Mm. In the in in the hopes of like you know making a crazy French hip hop album and maybe opening up a bit of like me working more with like French artists like from France as opposed to just Quebec. So look out for that. Look out for a lot of stuff coming. Um, yeah, no, but it's been a great interview, man. It's always a pleasure to come through. Always a pleasure to kick it with you, smoke a spliff, and uh, yeah, we'll do this again though anytime, bro. Hey man, next time we drop an album, we're back at. Hey, I wanna, I, I, I would love to freaking have, uh, me, you, and uh, the guy from I Am when when you guys album drop, do kind of three way type of thing. That would be interesting. So, hey man, uh, what's his name again? I, I, I gotta gotta check him out. It's uh, it's in English. I think you pronounce it Akhenaten, the okay. the the pharaoh. It's basically he just has the. It's a pharaoh. He's a pharaoh. I think. Pretty sure. Okay. Okay, okay, for sure. For yeah, sure. he's a he's a pharaoh. So it's uh, basically Akhenaten, but instead of T E N at the end, it's T O N. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll definitely uh so, I'll definitely yeah. check him out. So well, he's got hey. joints with uh P Rock too and shit. He's good stuff. For sure, for sure. Well, hey man, for everybody watching, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, I say what I mean, I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate, players gonna play. You guys holler at your boy.